What's up, gangsters? Yeah, it's, it's finally here. The long awaited, or oh, was it long awaited? Took me long enough. Anyways, part 10 of the most disturbing movies ever made video series. I was thinking about calling it like part X or just X, you know, like as in the, the Romanian number 10. But then I found like, well, the other videos, they would be like uh, part five out of X. You know, like that started to look a little too much like algebra. And hey, we're not here on YouTube to learn. We're here to watch girls getting tortured and raped, right? Anyway, did you see that? I, like, is it here, probably? The running time? Or is it there? I don't know. Anyway, I don't know what it is, because after filming this, I have to edit everything, but it's pretty long, right? Yeah, I thought for this 10th video, let's just make something crazy, like make, ugh. Anyway, I thought, let's make it long. So I've got 12 movies from all over the world. Well, except the US. There's, there's no American movie on this list. How about that? Also, I try to not just cover movies with, with torture and gore and, and rape and all that fun stuff. Now I try to go for a little more diversity this time. So yeah, it's gonna be super exciting. Let's start, let's transport to the other room. Boom! Well, um, with that many movies, I think it's time to finally reintroduce the beers. Boom! That should do the trick. So, let's start with a movie that's actually been recommended quite often, but I never gave it any attention. But now, for all you Australian kids out there, let's take a look at... Bad Boy Bobby. Sounds, uh, like whatever. Um, let's just see how much of a Bad Boy Bobby actually is. Hmm. Okay, Bad Boy Bobby. Let's review you. So, I love the idea of this movie. Just not a big fan of the execution. Which will probably make me pretty unpopular, since I believe this movie has quite a loyal fan base. Anyway, meet Bubby. He's been living in his small apartment with his mother for 35 years. He's never been outside because his mother says it's poisoned outside. And they have a very unhealthy relationship. In other words, Bubby is pretty messed up. After some 30 minutes, he's fed up with it all and goes out and from here on, different people take him under their wing and this sort of drags on until the movie somewhat ends. I love the first 30 minutes. I'm always intrigued by these messed up relations for some reason, on a psychological level, you know, like what it does to a person. That's why I thought, oh, it's gonna be super interesting to put such a person in the real world. And it sure makes for some interesting situations, <laughs> mostly because Bobby, he can only repeat, like, he only says things that he has heard before. Get off the ride, you fucking greedy bastard! Get off the fucking ride, you fucking greedy bastard! But it doesn't really go anywhere for me. Also, how unrealistic the first 30 minutes may seem, I found it more believable than anything that follows. It does work as a satire on modern society and how we value morals and all that. It even has some controversial anti-religion elements in it. Fuck you, God. Strike me down if you dare. But still, in the end, I wish for a little more narrative. It's sort of disturbing, I guess, because of the, the mother-son relationship, obviously, and some of the topics that are touched upon during the movie. But in the end, it's, it's also a quite funny movie because of Bobby, you know, like, he's very well played. For example, because it was so normal for him to play with his mother's breast, he does it to basically every female he encounters. So yeah, like I said, um, I love the ID, I just don't love the movie. And, and don't worry, I get it, I get the movie. I mean, sometimes it's just a matter of opinion, right? So if it seemed interesting to you, and you haven't seen it yet, just check it out, and I guess we're all still friends, right? Oh, okay, second movie on this list, and poo, we still have a lot uh, to go through. But again, a movie that has actually been uh, recommended or requested quite often. It's a uh, kill list. Wow, sounds violent. I guess, I don't know, is it? Well, uh... Let's just take a look at this movie. Oh wait, this is supposed to be a reaction shot, right? That's the ending of the movie, right? Wow! Coming straight out of Britain! <laughs> uh, Kill List immediately starts a bit intense with a fighting couple. 
for some reason I immediately liked the tone of the movie. Later on you realize that the acting is top notch, as is the interaction between the characters. First, first we need a story. So we have this guy, a soldier turned hitman, living with his wife and son. But they're running out of money, so he decides to take on another job with a friend, also a former soldier. Who was also a former raver, I believe. The main guy has major anger management problems though, so he goes a little wild during their job. And then some crazy shit happens. Like I said, the acting is really, really good. The characters are simple but believable and, and their interaction feels really natural. All of that makes the viewer very much involved in the movie and, and then you don't need rape and torture to disturb. The violence, there is violence of course, it's extreme but it doesn't seem gratuitous, there, there really isn't too much of it. But, and this is a big but, <laughs> people seem to hate the ending and I mean hate. I won't spoil it, but I feel like the ending really turns it into a love it or hate it movie. It didn't immediately insult me like it did many others, I think. And if you dig deep enough, it sort of makes sense. But it wasn't really satisfying after such an amazing build up. But to me, still a pretty damn cool little movie. So, did it make you guys curious about the ending? If so, Give it a check it out. I mean, yeah, it's actually it's pretty good. That's all that the hate is out there. You can uh, start leaving your hate comments below the new Google Plus comment system, and um, I'll just check them later. But before all of that, um, let's go to yet another continent, and I think this is actually the first South American movie on this whole list. Woo! Told you this list was gonna be full of excitement. Yeah, um, Snuff 102. My life. Everybody, I've been requesting it since day one. Just forget what I said about excitement. Because Snuff 102 is not very exciting. It's actually just quite a mess. It's, yeah, it's, uh, where to start? There's, there's all kinds of things going on. There's this storyline where girls are being tortured. And then you have this guy talking about the, the snuff phenomena. And then some other stories, I guess. But I guess it's... In the end, it's, it's about this girl who is interested in the subject matter that being snubbed. So she goes and interviews that one guy. And to me, this was the most interesting part of the movie. But still, you're, you're way better off watching a real documentary on the subject matter. The movie is uh, so ugly. Sometimes it's black and white. Then you have this high contrasted colors. It's, it's all over the place and it, it just looks like shit. The audio is a mess. And the camera work is amateuristic at best. They, they throw in some internet pictures and videos straight off Rotten.com to spice things up, but this only makes it look cheaper. There is enough torture going on, I guess, and, and it is pretty gruesome, and you could definitely call it disturbing, but, but it's just... Uh, as a viewer, you don't care for anyone or anything in this movie at all. I don't care if they get tortured. I'm way more annoyed by the ugly colors and annoying sound. Later in the movie they try to throw in some narrative all of a sudden, but by this point, the movie is already long lost. I honestly just watched it so I could, you know, check it off the list, because apparently there's quite some people out there that actually think this is like a super disturbing movie. <laughs> I'm not one of them. I, I guess the idea was pretty interesting, a bit, not really. <laughs> Let me just say it, this movie sucks, but hopefully the next one doesn't. Where's my list? Oh. It's in a glass cage. Or tras el cristal. Eh, boom, Spanish 101 or 102, you know. Because, uh, um, let's just take a look at this movie. I saw this movie a long time ago, and I always remember it left me with a um. Well, well, maybe that was a disturbed feeling. Recently watched it again, and now saw it for the great movie it actually is. So, this ex-Nazi guy who experimented on children during World War II tries to commit suicide, fails, and end up paralyzed. Huh, <laughs> how ironic is that? Uh, depending on this crazy-ass machine. Could this be the titular glass cage? Yes. His wife kinda gets tired of, of taking care of him until a male nurse shows up, promising to do his best to take care of the man. 
Spoiler alert! If, if you really totally want to be surprised by this movie, just stop watching this video right now and, and watch the movie. I'm probably pretty stupid because the first time I saw this movie, it took me long enough to discover that the male nurse, um, he's actually one of the man's past victims with whom he had a pretty messed up relationship, I guess. He wants to take revenge by acting in a similar way the man did. And that's where the disturbing stuff comes in. I don't want to spoil too much of that. That you really just have to see for yourself. Because honestly, this is a movie that I would consider to be disturbing. The whole look and feel, the whole atmosphere, it just works. I mean, it, it looks beautiful, a very bluish overall tone and... It's it's quite sl it's actually pretty slow at times, but but in some weird way it's not slow in an annoying way. It, it kind of adds to it. Um, does that make sense? Probably doesn't. The movie has a very bleak, nihilistic tone to it that's missing in more popular, disturbing movies like Saw and Hostel, movies who go for the cool factor. And that that's why this one does work. I'm glad that I recently saw this movie again because I sort of like rediscovered it and it's actually really good. And on top of that, I actually think it is a little bit disturbing. Huh, how about that? Woo! Okay, second movie from the UK. I can't even, I can't even do accents. I guess I'll just stick to the, the Dutch accent. Easiest for me, obviously. Anyway, um, back in 2008, this little independent horror movie came out and uh, people seem to think uh, it's quite disturbing because it's been recommended basically since day one. And today, we're finally going to take a look at it. Mom and Dad. Nice one, brother. Let's do this. So that was awesome. Well, that was, was pretty cool, actually. I'd never covered this one before because it's it's just not the most original or disturbing thing in the world. But now I've thought like, hey, it's, it's actually pretty okay, so why not? It might not be fair that I tend to trace back the origin of every crazy family kidnaps a girl story to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But I did it again with this one. Because it is about a girl that, after a work day, she misses the bus, so she joins a co-worker to her home and meets a crazy family. She's sort of being adopted in the family, I guess, against her own will, obviously. And from here on, it's just the girl trying to escape and the rest of the family not appreciating that. But it isn't as over-the-top or gory or super gratuitous with its violence as you might think, and that actually works in its favor. Well, there's enough physical abuse, there's, there's also a lot of psychological abuse, so to say, going on. It's just one big messed up household this girl ended up in. I honestly don't think the movie has any more meaning to it than whatever we see on the surface. Um, it's just a movie produced following the, the torture porn, and I'm doing, doing the air quotes now, hype of the mid-2000s. And I hate the term torture porn, but then at least you guys sort of know what I'm talking about, I guess. But like I said, this isn't your typical splatter torture stuff. So yeah, besides all of that, it's it's, it's okay acted, it's well directed, I guess, and yeah, for the people that haven't seen this one but are into this sort of subgenre, yeah, I would recommend it. And yeah, I know, I didn't really go in-depth into the movie with this review, but I don't know, the movie just honestly hasn't that much going on for it. And not per se in a negative way. I mean, uh, we're all familiar with the subgenre, and it's it's really, it's just a, a very decent contribution. That's all. So, um, I think we're going to stay in Europe for a little bit, because I believe we haven't visited France in a while. Even though the country is being pretty frequent on this list. You know, like with that recent wave of, of the new new wave of horror, stream horror, I think they call it. But, uh, no, it's not high tension, sorry. It's a movie by a director who already contributed irreversibly to this list in one of the earlier videos. I Stand Alone, or Seul Contre Tout, Oui Oui Mes Amis. Is that fine? Well, that was a, a pretty damn good movie that, that I just watched. What starts in the short movie Carne and sort of comes to a sad conclusion in the opening of Irreversible, I Stand Alone tells the story of this man, simply known as the Butcher, since he used to work as a butcher. <laughs> 
Basically, the whole movie is about the butcher trying to get his shit together, accompanied by his thoughts in, in form of a voiceover, complaining about life and society. And it's really negative and nihilistic. L'amour, l'amitié, tout ça c'est du pipo. Ce sont des illusions. Des illusions de jeunesse qu'on entretient pour cacher que tous les rapports humains ne sont que du petit commerce. What really adds to this is the minimalistic style in which it is shot, edited and scored works really well. Visually, this movie isn't really disturbing like the other movies on this list, although there are definitely some brutal scenes, but it's really about the theme of the movie. It asks us to think about society and question morality. Especially that last one is interesting, since it's, it's kind of up to the viewer to decide whether or not the butcher is a good or a bad person. I don't usually get disturbed by movies, which <laughs> sometimes makes it hard to, to make these videos, but after watching this movie, it, it did leave me with a, a certain feeling, which I don't experience too often with the movies on this list. I guess it's disturbing, so to say, in a uh, intense, depressing way, which also counts, I guess. Real characters, real problems, and, well, any movie that has a dramatic climax with Pachelbel's cannon playing in the background is a great movie in my book. So yeah, that was a, a pretty amazing movie. Definitely something else, but definitely worth checking out. Not much more I can add to that, so I won't. <laughs> well, and, and well, that was the second movie by Gaspar Noé on this list. For the next director, it's going to be his third movie. So, Third movie, not third, third movie. What I'm thinking. So, um, ha, the, the hardcore viewers might know uh, who I'm talking about and, and which movie is coming up next. If you're not that hardcore, no, guys. No, it's a uh, it's imprint by Takashi Miike. Yeah? Okay. Miike! Yeah, I have no idea what I was trying to do. So, really quick, the backstory. In 2005, there was this TV series where different so called masses of horror directed a one hour long movie. One of them was too disturbing for television and was only later released on home media. That one, of course, being Imprint. So, let's see. The story is about this guy who goes to a Japanese island looking for the love of his life he met years earlier. She worked in a brothel, and when he meets another prostitute, so to say, she tells him about what happened to her, in a million different versions. Just tell me the truth. I need to know! So, when something is too disturbing for TV, you expect quite a bit, of course. But, I don't know, um, well, there is a brief torture scene, which is indeed pretty nasty. The constant screaming is annoying, though, <laughs> although I... Can't really blame her for that. But I don't know, I feel like the, the personal story of the girl telling the story is perhaps more disturbing. At least one of all those different versions she's telling. One thing that kind of bothers me though is that the movie is set in Japan, but everybody's talking English. It's probably because it was made for American television, but in some situations, it's just plain silly. If you can't get them with your looks, make them happy with something else. Pretty scary, huh? But besides that, it's, uh, it's pretty Mickey-esque, if that's a word. It is now homeboys. Um, maybe not the most disturbing thing ever, but then again, hey, what do I know with my uh, desensitized mind? And I did not say that to act cool. It was a genuine remark. I did like the movie for what it is. I guess it's just a little bit overrated. And that's coming from a big Takeshi Miike fan. Oh well. So, uh, are you guys curious to what's next on this list? Well, uh, just uh, come and see. Oh, see what I did there? Because that's... Come and see. Or, uh, Idi Smotri. Boo, that's me speaking Russian. I think. No, I don't know. Well... Let's just first watch this movie. Oh, wow, well, well, I came and saw already. Yeah. And now for something completely different. 
It wasn't even recommended that often, but like I said, I wanted to show a little more variety in the picks. Because this is a war movie. A Russian, well, a Soviet, or Belarusian, I don't know. World War II movie from the 80s. And let me start off by saying I've hardly seen any war movies, but I wanted to pick something a little less obvious than, let's say, Saving Private Ryan or Schindler's List. So, these two Russian kids, they want to join in on fighting the Nazis. All they need to do is find a gun for themselves. When they do, we follow this boy, who's taken from his home to fight along the Soviet partisans. And then, little by little, he starts to realize it isn't all that much fun as he expected it to be. It's a, it's a little slow, so it might take you a little while to get into, but when you do, you do witness the atrocities of war through the eyes of a kid. And boy, this kid looks sincerely disturbed. It's the kind of movie that doesn't need to show a lot of murder and rape. Really, just implying it, it really is enough. The lengthy scene where a little village is systematically wiped out is probably the most infamous and it sort of works as the centerpiece of the whole movie. And it is indeed pretty intense. Definitely a movie that deserves way longer review than I can give it now, but for the sake of diversity, I think it surely deserved a place on this list. Because despite the perhaps dated pacing, it was, it was really pretty good. So if you, for once, do not want to see Japanese girls being tortured to death, check it out. Speaking of Japanese girls being tortured to death, yeah, I guess there was no escaping the following movie for this video. So uh, without further ado, boys and girls, the infamous Niku Daruma, or Tumbling Doll of Flesh, or Psycho, the snuff reels, or Pau, or Judge for Yourself, or just yet another solo snuff movie inspired by the guinea pigs, but this time disguised as a porn flick. Yeah, let's just get it over with. Is it over? Uh, check. So, here it's just called Psycho, I guess. It's a Japanese movie, but I don't think there are subtitles out there, so if there are some life-changing dialogue going on, I missed out on that. <laughs> but I highly doubt it. When the movie started, I wasn't even sure whether it was just very badly filmed, or that it was another one of those found footage kind of deals. Well, it's, it's the latter. The movie is about these guys who make a low-budget porn movie, until the female actress isn't into it anymore. Then they decide to torture her. I mean... Why not? And it's it's really just that. 50% hardcore porn, 50% torture. Or, well, perhaps one-third porn, one-third torture, and one-third waiting for shit to happen. I don't know if people ever thought that this was real, but even with the first bit of violence, it, it can't possibly be real due to the multiple camera angles. But let's talk torture, because that's what the movie is infamous for, right? So, she gets her legs cut off, one arm, and they mess around with her tongue. Nothing too crazy. Well, obviously way worse than I've ever experienced. And yeah, the tongue stuff was pretty nasty. And fake. I've never seen such a big tongue. Well, perhaps on Miley Cyrus. The movie goes pretty over the top when one guy has sex with a chick through a hole cut in her stomach. Later I also get the male actor, but I'll leave some surprises for the weird people that are actually like, Oh man, I gotta check this movie out. I really didn't care for this movie whatsoever. I know it's, it's like super infamous, but I don't know. Also while watching I kept wondering like, what was the target audience that they had in mind for this movie? You know, because like the first half is basically just porn, second half torture porn if you will. Hmm. Also, I've been watching movies straight for 862 minutes. I don't care. I don't know. Still as bright outside as it was in the beginning though, so uh, let's go on. And let's do so by, well, giving Japan another chance. Because the next movie, I actually covered it um, during the 30 day horror challenge. I mentioned this one as, as the most disturbing horror movie. And that is Tetsuo or uh, Tetsuo. Iron Man. I didn't pick it because I think it's the most disturbing horror movie ever made. Um, it's just, I wanted to do something that I actually own on DVD. And something that was a bit different. Well, is it different? 
Yeah, it sure is. Whoa. <laughs> this is definitely an odd one. Ooh, where to start? Um, well, it's about a guy who slowly turns into metal. Oh yeah, that, that's basically it. It's crazy. It happens after he hits the so-called metal fetishist with his car. In the end, the two battle. Yeah. Everything in this movie works together. The grainy 16mm look in black and white, the cinematography, the music and audio design, the editing, the stop motion effects, everything adds to this movie's atmosphere. The sound design is really good and it's probably the scariest thing in the whole movie. Because honestly, at points, the movie gets pretty creepy. It is very artsy though, and now I make it sound like that's a bad thing, but that really, just keep it in mind. Um, the story isn't really what it's about, I hope <laughs> at least, because it's super vague at best. I like to describe this movie more as an audiovisual experience. It's just, you put it on, you watch it, and it's like, boom, what the hell's going on? But to me, it feels like everything is done to enhance just that viewing experience. Does, does that make sense? Maybe I should just stick to reviewing movies like Avatar. <laughs> that was a little inside joke, huh? Making fun of the haters? Back off. But yeah, Tetsuo! If it's disturbing, it's because it's an uh, overwhelming, perhaps disturbing, audiovisual experience. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's really all I can make of this movie. But I do enjoy it, and it runs for only like uh, 65 minutes, and that's long enough, you know? Either way, it's definitely an interesting cinematic experience. Whoa. And if you think it's, it's, it's something for you, check it out. Tatsuo. Okay, boom. Whoa, we're, all, we're almost through. Wow. So for now, second Australian movie on this list, it's Angst. Whoa. With a little joke. It's, a, it's an Austrian movie. But you know, it looks so similar. In, in Dutch, we just say Oostenrijk. You know, it's boom. It's Oostenrijk. Anyway, um, first Austrian movie on this list, well, today's list, because uh, Funny Games is an Austrian movie. So, uh, let's see if this is also a funny g uh, move. Alright, so sad. Let's, ju let's just watch it. Angst. Well, that, that definitely wasn't funny. It was pretty good. Angst, or welcome into the mind of a serial killer. <laughs> because that's basically what this movie is. Literally, since it's mostly driven by a voiceover, the thoughts of the protagonist, who happens to be a serial killer that just got released from prison. There's hardly any dialogue. We just follow this guy around who, after his release, immediately has the urge to kill again. So yeah, yeah, the story is simple, but effective. I mean, it works because it's a very personal story. Um, sounds weird, but personal to the killer. He talks about his childhood, the motives for his actions, his plans, all that kind of stuff. And obviously, I'm no expert, but I think on a psychological level, it all kind of makes sense. It's not particularly violent or, or graphic, but it can get quite intense. The home invasion part doesn't seem completely realistic at parts, but then again, what do I know about home invasion? N nothing. I, I don't know anything about that because... Uh. But the movie works, because you follow the serial killer so close that you start to try and understand his actions, perhaps, which is kind of disturbing on its own if you think about it. Add to that some amazing cinematography throughout, and you have a pretty solid movie. Honestly, the, the camera work so original, it, it really adds to the experience. So, yes, it, it's about a serial killer, but definitely a different kind of disturbing. Yeah. Call me weird or whatever, but I really like this movie. It's a shame that the director never made another movie afterwards. Or before, for that matter. From what I understand, the guy is a is a pretty successful writer, director, producer on commercials and educational movies. It's a shame because I'd be pretty curious to see more feature films by this guy. You know what else I'm pretty curious to? The last movie on this list. 
Oh, it would be nice if we would go out with a good movie, wouldn't it? <sighs> See, the skin I live in, or La Piel Que Habito, another Spanish movie. See, ja 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 ja. Okay, let's do this. And we did end this video with a good movie. Great movie, actually. A recent, relatively expensive movie by a well-respected director. <laughs> we don't have many of those on this list. The less you know about the story, the better, but basically we follow Antonio Banderas being a badass as always, this time a surgeon who keeps this beautiful woman in captivity at his home. Throughout the movie we learn more about his family and history and little by little all the pieces come together. Which is probably the best part of the story. It's, it's not a horror movie, at least definitely not in a traditional sense. I'd call it a psychological drama with hints of horror, I guess. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I wanted to cover movies that don't just rely on sex and violence. And even though there's rape and violence in this movie, it isn't explicit, because it doesn't need to be. With this movie, it's all about the story and how it develops. That way, at a certain point, you're like, damn son, where'd you find this? Beautiful music, great cinematography, believable acting, this movie has it all going on. And because it's so well made, you really get into the whole story and you'll forgive minor plot holes and you're able to suspend your disbelief. So wh why is it on the disturbing movies list? Because the story is just pretty messed up. But I can't go in that without spoiling it. And I do not like doing that when it comes to a movie that you really have to see for yourself. I'm perhaps better at making uh, funny reviews on crappy movies, but... Uh, so while this review might not have been the most entertaining one, I do highly recommend the movie. Really good. And I'm glad to end this video with The Skin I Live In, because really, it's one of the better movies I've seen lately. Hmm. I always do these outros, even though they're never really necessary. Anyway, I hope uh, you guys uh, enjoyed this sort of special edition episode, I guess. I don't know when or if there will be a part 11 or a XI. <laughs> if anything, the, the next uh, disturbing movies related video that I want to do is it's going to be a, a top 65, I guess. It's basically going to be like a uh, an overview of all the movies I've covered in these 10 parts. But then like from my least favorite to my most favorite. Personal recap, if you will. And yeah, that's... Uh, that's all I have for you guys today.